Hello everyone and welcome back to Broken Sword Shadow of the Templars. My name is Pete, I'm joined once again by... Yes. And when we uh, last left our story we just got back from Ireland with a shiny blue gemstone and two new leads, being, uh, was being Montfasson and Jacques Marquet. So let's see if we can find any information about them now. So our first port of co uh, call is the Kroon Museum to see if Lobano is there yet. Ah, he was a thin-faced, pallid guy with a questionable taste in outlandish clothes. My mother used to dress like that. Pretty sizable info dump. So I beg your pardon. Yourself. Are you Andre Lobino? That's me. You want my autograph? No. I was told you may be able to help me. Help? My name is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay. Shoot. Right. So we can ask about uh, the image of the hanged man on uh, Montfaucon. Uh, this, if memory serves, is Philippe Lebel, the king. Mm -hmm. Or we can just get uh, straight to the point and ask about the manuscript. Oh, I get straight to the manuscript. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment? Do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, Again, there are certain threw it people off a two -story who window. It to get their hands on it. Intriguing. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Without seeing the manuscript, uh, that's a tall order. Just tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. Uh, it's at her house, isn't it? Yep. Sorry, it's at Nico's place. The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah. Not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come round and take a look. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, she's a woman. Maybe it was my imagination, but I noticed a predatory look in his eye. Suddenly, this friendly historian had turned into the big bad wolf. So we can't just jump the gun and give, her, uh, give him Nico's address right now, but she might not appreciate yeah. that. So we'll come back to that later. So uh -huh. Shall we ask him about the Templars? See yeah. if he knows about them? Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? Yes, I a sure lot. can, Georgie. Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. Right. More information? Yeah. How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. The king of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The order became known first as the Knights of the Temple and later as the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, André. Glad to be of help, Georgie. Now well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So their money, goods, and lands were donated to the order. The Templars soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Okay. Now, this was this is a uh, kind of a questionable des uh, design choice. Okay. Uh, they spent a lot of time just talking to Andre here, and yet he uh, we all only ever see him way back here in the distance. Yeah. It, felt, it feels it would make more sense to have him like up on the foreground. Yeah, it would. Yeah, but anyway, what do I know? Uh, shall we continue asking about Templars? Yeah. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, uh, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Or oh, if it does, the truth has never been made public. 
What do you mean by that? The Templars have attained a mythological status, like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. Really? Really? Well, anyway, that's about all we can get from the Templars for now, so... Should we move on to the, the image of the Hanged Man? Yeah. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure, it was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the Revolution. A public toilet? Montfaucon was the place of execution for many thousands. A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope while the crows devoured their flesh. That explains the image of the hanged man. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland, in a village called Lochmarn. Lochmarn? That's where Pigram was digging. That's right. He'd left the excavation before I arrived. So now we can ask about Professor Pigram himself. Oh, okay. So we can do that or continue asking about Montfaucon. Maybe Pigram then go back. Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. When was this? Oh, uh, back in the summer. Uh, July, I think. The second week of July? Maybe. Yes, it was. Uh, just before Bastille Day. So Pegram was in Paris at the same time as the other victims. Pardon? Victims of what? Uh, nothing. Just thinking aloud. Okay. So, back to Montfaucon. Mm -hmm. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin. But there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the Revolution. Well, we know where Montfaucon is now, so... Now we can ask about King Philip. What can you tell me about Philippe le Bel? He was responsible for the extermination of the Knights Templar. I know that, but why was Philip so hot to get rid of them? Mostly because he wanted to get his hands on their treasure. He had an enormous debt and a lifelong war with England to fund. The trouble was the Templars were a highly respected holy order. And yet more. If the Templars were so powerful, how did this Philippe dude wipe them out? By underhanded, dishonorable means, of course. The Pope was Clement V, a Frenchman. French, huh? Handy for Philippe. Fate had nothing to do with it. He was Philippe's puppet, planted to further his political ambitions. Philippe wanted the wealth of the Templars and used Clement to get it. And suddenly I want to play Crusader Kings 2 again. So what was Philippe's plan? What happened? Sealed orders were sent out all over France, not to be opened until the appointed day. That day was Friday, July 13th. That's the origin of our superstition regarding that date. At dawn, throughout the whole of France, the Templars were arrested. It was the biggest bust in the history of the world. And now we get into the gruesome details. Oh, what happened to the stuff. Templars after their arrest? Philippe was out for blood, so he handed the Templars over to the Inquisition. Not surprisingly, they confessed to a sensational and sordid list of blasphemies. Like what? Oh, the sort of things you read about in the gutter press. Devil worship, lewd sexual practices, <laughs> spitting on the Holy Cross, that kind of thing. Well, that must have given their lawyers some headaches. Whether or not the accusations were true, this was not good publicity. Most of the charges were probably cooked up, <laughs> but so were the Templars, literally. Andre de were found indeed. guilty of heresy and flame grilled at the stake. They died protesting their innocence. Oh. Shall we hear more? Yeah. But surely Philippe had no proof of his charges against the Templars. A man will admit anything under torture. 
The Inquisition fabricated some nonsensical demon called Baphomet. And then Remember suggested that to their really victims important. that this was what they worshipped. But they didn't have to agree. The record show a Templar coming to trial with both feet burnt off. Mm. Fragments of flesh and charred bone falling from the stamps. What would you not admit to, to stop such torment? So there was no truth at all in the Baphomet accusations? Not a shred. Almost every victim described the idol differently. No, Baphomet never existed outside the sick minds of the Inquisitors. Uh. Well, incidentally, the, uh, the German title of this game is Baphomet's Curse. Ah, oh, so. okay. And for some reason in America it's called Circle of Blood. No, me neither. Anyway. So Philippe stole the Templar's riches, huh? Oh no, they weren't stupid. The king's troops marched first on the temple in Paris, then to the Templar home port at La Rochelle. There was no trace of the treasure, and the fleet of the Knights Templar had set sail. Well, so that's all the historical details we can get from Andre for now. So, shall I show him some of our impressive collection? Yeah. Let me see if he knows anything about the gemstone. Yeah. What do you make of this? It's the biggest gemstone I've ever seen. Where did you get it? From Professor Pegram's messenger boy. Did uh, Pegram find this on his dig? Yeah, the site where this was found was a Templar castle. Do you think it could be part of the Templar treasure? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. Well, fair enough then. Hmm. Anything else worth asking him about? Uh, let's see else. Should we ask about the matchbook? He might know about Alamut. Maybe. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Alamut is the name of the place where the Hashashin were based. Where is it? Somewhere in what used to be called Persia. I'm not too hot on modern geography, I'm afraid. The most recent map I have shows America as an English colony. Maybe it's showing the picture of the man, maybe. Okay. Does the guy in this photograph look familiar to you? No. Oh, okay. well, direct into the point. Yeah. Um, maybe Anything else? No. I think maybe that's an eco, maybe. Okay. Want back to ask her if, uh, if he can come over? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go up a Thanks look. for your help, Andre. You're welcome. And here's where some more time can be saved nowadays by just uh, pulling out your mobile phone. Yeah. But alas, that wasn't an option back in 1996. You could have a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, pretty much everything for, uh, I know about uh, the Knights Templar came from this game and the, in the days before Wikipedia. Oh. Yeah, so now we have Montfaucon, so we can now go there. But first, let's head back to Nico. seem to rush in here, does he? Yeah. He it's going to be slow. Yeah, he's place. clearly in no hurry. He is a tourist, though. He is, he is on his own. And he still hasn't learned anything else. Across, across oh, hi. I didn't expect you back so soon. Do you mind if Labano sees the manuscript? I guess not. He wants to come over. Shall I give him your address? Yes, that's fine. Maybe he'll make sense of the manuscript. Yeah. And now we can also ask about the Templars. Oh, yeah. Have you found out any more about the Knights Templar? Yes, I have. The guy responsible for the downfall was Philippe IV, the King of France, otherwise known as Philippe le Bel. I've heard of him. Well, he is known to history as Philippe de Fer, but I doubt if the Templars called him that. I'm sure André will tell you all about him. Yep, yeah, he already has done. Mm -hmm. And at length. So, yeah, that's basically everything. Back yeah. we go. I'll see you again soon. Okay. They don't have any pay phones either, because he could have just called us on pay phones. But it's like... But... Well, 
suppose we could have gone to the uh, police station and used their payphone, but it's right next door to her anyway, so no real point. Mr. Lobano. Hi, Andre. Hello, Georgie. This friend who has the manuscript? Ah, uh, oui, uh, the anonymous girlfriend. She lives at 361 Rue Jarry. Ah, I know it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. <laughs> he sounds so slimy. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Yeah, it's weird that there's a kind of a, a rivalry put, between George and Andre in this game, but, uh, but where they're still basically friends. But like in f later games in the series, it portrays them as if they just outright despise one another. <laughs> like it kind of escalates pretty quickly. Right. So anyway, let's go have a look at Montfaucon. And this this is another place I was uh, very disappointed to learn was uh, entirely made up for this game. You just made up places. That's yeah. A typically Parisian sidewalk cafe. Last time I visited one of those, it blew up. I decided I was happy enough right where I was. Well, yeah. can't go in. But we I once read on. a list of low-stress jobs. It didn't include police work. Obviously, this guy hadn't read the same list. Well, let's chop up this guy. Excuse me, officer. And how may I help you? Well, we can either ask about the Knights Templar or ask about himself and why he's just wasting time sitting on his arse outside the cafe. Maybe show a bit of interest in him before we... Shouldn't you be off directing traffic or something? You have seen the Parisian traffic, no? Yeah, so? I could direct the traffic. The most dangerous, the east side of Rome. Or I can sit here and enjoy the sun, the architecture, and the Soso Sauvignon. Which would you choose? Yeah, but I'm not a policeman. What happened to duty? An excellent question, monsieur. Okay. Oh, this character was apparently based on uh, a real-life French policeman that Charles Cecil once on saw. He was attempting to, uh, with less, with very little success, to direct traffic and just being beat and sworn out. So eventually, he just gave up and uh, went sat down and had a glass of wine. Sounds fair enough. So. Because, yeah, Templars. What do you know about the Knights Templar? Les Templiers. Only that they were excommunicated in 1312 and hanged in their dozens within this very square. Boy, what they teach in the police academy these days. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. Oh, there's an information board. Yep, we can oh, see, yeah. it. see it just over here. We can have a look at that just once yeah. we're finished talking to him. Shall we show him anything? Maybe just the photo. Okay. Have you seen this man before? No. Mm -hmm. Who is it? I believe him to be an international assassin. Oh, is that all you can say? Oh, I did wonder if I should say that I believe you to be an international paranoiac, but it didn't seem polite. Okay, well, no one believes the, the, the old Parisian sauce is strong with this yeah. one. Anything else? No, I'll leave him alone. No. no, just let him, leave him to get drunk. I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. We'll see him again later on anyway. Okay. So, let's have a look at that notice board that he mentioned, shall we? Fixed to the wall was a sign in three languages. None of them English. No, I'm joking. In French, English, and German, it read, In 1312, Pope Clement V dissolved the knightly order of the Templars and excommunicated its members on charges of heresy. In the following two years, many of the knights were hanged on this site. Their Grand Master, Jacques de Molay, 
was burnt at the stake on an island in the Seine. Oh. An architectural echo of the gallows that once used to stand here. We've got nothing further down there. Ooh, and we have another manhole coming. In the middle of the square was a manhole. I wondered if there might be something relevant beneath street level. Well, exploring the I could has done us well hands. before. Well, you've been carrying it's, that too around. Yeah, it's been served us well before. Yeah, that's another thing. We took this all the way to Ireland. Is yeah. this considered carry-on luggage in 1996? Are you oh, you would have been back then. You yeah. bring everything on the plane back then. Ah, uh, the good old days before 9-11. Yeah. Huh? Hey! Hey, you! What do you think you are doing? Leave that cover alone! Now! Sorry, no harm intended. You stay away from that. Okay. So it'll be a while yet before we actually get to come back here, but eventually we'll find An a way down An ornate fountain there. stood in one corner of the square. I'd have to come by here in the summer to see it working. There was no water to frolic about in, and the leaf mold that was collecting there just wasn't the same somehow. Yeah, somehow I don't much fancy our chances of going all the way back to Loch Marne, into the pub, soaking the tile again and coming all the way back before it gets dried, so... Yeah, yeah that's not gonna work. At the top of the stairs was a medieval church. Oh. It's a nice church. Yes. Whenever you're ready, George. Yeah, he's so sorry. A knight's tomb, his effigy in marble lying in perpetual state. Okay. Waiting in prayer for the judgment day. Okay. A row of old pews, beautifully carved and glowing with polish. I thought of all the people who must have sat here over the decades. All those Parisian derrieres firm buttocks of the young ladies, the flabby flesh of the old men. That wasn't a pleasing image, so I went back to the young ladies. Whoa! Should I we have our arse to, to the list? Mm -hmm. Nope, alas, we don't have time. Oh well. A knight there in the company of his fellows. Biblical references engraved into the tomb edge to guide his way to the next world. I guess. And then we have four more knights up in front here. A stone knight lay on the church floor. Just think, there's a dead guy under there. Kind of a creepy thought when you get right down to it. Yeah. Is that someone The second standing? stone knight in a row of four lay on the church floor. What, uh, this guy here? Mm -hmm. uh, nope, that's a statue. statue. Mm. So. I was surprised Philip LeBel had left this place alone. Yeah, there will eventually be someone here, but not just yet. A stone knight lay in full stone armor, blank eyes looking at the ceiling. Carrying all that armor around must have been hard work. Not to mention loud. Mm. A stone knight lay at the end of a row of four. I wondered if this guy had died in combat. Let's look at this window. A huge stained glass window formed a magnificent centerpiece for its neighbors. I didn't recognize the biblical story in it. I was a Sunday school dropout. How does one drop out of Sunday school? Mm. Well, the windows either side, somewhat less impressive. A huge arched window. Somehow it looked more modern than its neighbor. And, as I said, less impressive. Oh, no, let's have a look at this one as well. An enormous window. In comparison to its neighbor, it looked pretty plain. Mm. Yes, that's what I said, didn't that's, I? That's weird that those two aren't 
thing goes. Let me just draw more attention to the centerpiece. Holding a staff and a scroll. The statue had any secrets. It was concealing them pretty well. It has a staff and a scroll, so... On the end of the staff was some kind of disc with a cross on it. Around the base of the disc was a hairline crack. Well, I could have just taken the end off the staff, but I wanted to be sure what I'd be getting out of vandalizing a church, other than deported. Well, fair enough then. Let's have a look at the scroll instead. A scroll was a symbol of scholarship. I knew that much. Per disciplinum meum lux videbis. A bit of a stained glass window. Wow! Hoping for a big insight while squinting through a hunk of statuary had been pretty optimistic, I guess. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Nothing else here for now. Let's click that side window there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this location will become important later on, but for now it's basically just establishing that it's there. Yeah. Is the cop still around? Yep. Yeah, he's not leaving any time soon, spoiler alert. Mm. But anyway, that's the... Uh, yeah, come on, let me leave. Let me leave. Okay, so we've chased down the first of our two leads, mm -hmm. uh, being Montfasson. The second was Jacques Marquet. Yeah. So, who might know about him? The cop? Oops. He, he was reportedly a bit of an unsavory figure, so they might know about him. Excuse me, what do you want now? But sure enough, here we are. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Mamad. I heard he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Let's see if we can find out where. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the Mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. Very literal minded police officer. Right. Shall we have a word with Rosso while we're here? Yeah, why not? Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, we do. Yes, I do. One moment, monsieur. Rosso just seems so uninterested. Stobart is here to see you, monsieur. Did he say what it was about? No, monsieur. Very well. What now, Monsieur? So we now have Marquet, the Templars, and Pegram. Okay, Marquet. Ever heard of a guy called Marquet? Jacques Marquet? Marquet? I know the name well. He has a record for suspected blackmail, kidnapping, arson, and art theft. An all-rounder, huh? How come he's on the loose? His bravado is matched only by the courtroom skills of his attorney. That's one way of putting it. What next? Yeah, they, they, just, they weren't really interested in the case, no. so... Maybe Pegram, but... Another well, case? Like, he is, he is technically a missing person at this point. Yeah. Have you heard of Professor Pegram, the archaeologist? Molly Pegram? The second son of Lord Barclay Pegram? Well, I don't know. I only read about him in a magazine. So much for the efficacy of rehabilitation. What has he done this time? He made an important archaeological find in Ireland. We might find out more, possibly. Do you know Pegram well? 
I have connections with the family, but I wouldn't say I knew him at all. Is his name really Molly? Of course not. That was the nickname he was given at school. All his friends and acquaintances know him as Molly. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I can't remember if it's been established, uh, but uh, later on in the game uh, we find out it's, his name was Nigel. Nigel? Yeah. Yeah. Molly's possibly a more interesting yeah. name. Who knows? I, th I think we've established that already. I can't remember. Anyway, let's move on to the Templars, shall we? Have you heard of the Knights Templar? Les Templiers. But of course, monsieur, their fame is widespread throughout France. We haven't forgotten them. Unlike the rest of Europe. It was the King of France who persecuted them, though. Indeed. That shook his cool. Underneath his cultured facade, the man was real twitchy. You're, we've touched a nerve there. Yeah. Let's prod it. You're obviously a great admirer of the Knights Templar. They were men of great honor, monsieur. The flower of chivalry. Not everyone would share your views, Inspector. Not everyone shares my passion for Bartok. But if the Templars were as honorable as... That's enough. I do not wish to hear your uninformed opinions, Stobard. Why do you get so wound up about the Knights Templar? They've been dead for centuries. I shouldn't have pushed my luck. Maybe his ancestors were Templars. Whatever. I saw the anger flare in his eyes like a distant summer thunderstorm. The Templars were the first true internationalists. 800 years on, and still the world is fragmented by nationalistic flag-waving fools. You will excuse me. Actually, that sounds rather ahead of its time. So yeah, we've successfully pissed Rosso off. I think we should probably give him some time to cool down. Yeah. Well, no matter, we now know where we can find uh, Monsieur Marquet. Let's see, where are we? Ah yeah, the Hospital, the High and Meyer Clinic. The old building managed to retain some of its original grandeur, but the modern additions look like a baseball cap on a statue of a medieval saint. Well, here's the Hagenmeyer Clinic, so somewhere within we'll find uh, Monsieur Marquet. So I think we may have to hold off on that until next time, so join us then and, and we'll see what we can find uh, within the walls of the clinic. Right. Say goodnight, Viv. Goodnight, Viv. Good night, everybody.